back on Sunday night. What time did y'all get back Sunday night? Midnight. Midnight. Two a.m. Yeah, I got yeah, I got home early in everybody's so live, you know, closer to the better part, better part of the world. But we got back Sunday night. We left Wednesday to go out to uh, competition dynamics. Right, it's technically the Accufire Team Safari match, twenty twenty two. Competition dynamics. Jimmy and Zach put it on. They do a fantastic job. But today we're talking about our gear, which is obviously why we do this. It's a massive gear race. And it's really funny when you fail hugely at bringing the right gear. But we'll mm-hmm. talk about that. So, those who don't know who we are, I am Brandon Sisson from AccuFire. This fellow here. Jason Rex from AccuFire. Josh Cavalier. And Lee. Yep. That's us. We, we them people. Hey, but it's, uh, we, we want to talk about, you know, basically our guns, what our gear was. Uh, we, you know, these two guys on this side have a lot more experience than this side, so we want to make sure they were here to talk about the gear and what they use and what's important. So uh, we'll start with you guys. What uh, just tell us one first and foremost. What was uh, let's talk about our guns real quickly about what you wanted was brought. Hanley, uh, I ran a uh, six five gas gun from uh, Arrow. They sent us the upper. Uh, you know, we ran that one. We felt a large frame gas gun for some of the targets out there give me faster hits. So I ran that and uh, we ended up running pretty well. Yeah. Sure. On primary, I ran American Rifle Company six millimeter Creedmoor, and I think that was about as good as as good as you could get out there for that match. Yeah. Cheater gun. Okay. Jay. I ran a gas gun chambered in two two three wild. Um, it was challenging. Uh, a lot of fun. Learned a lot. Um, looking forward to doing it again next year and taking some. Uh, Rain gear with me. What uh? What was your upper on that one? Uh, it uh, the upper is a arrow with a T box barrel. And an Anderson lower, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I took this uh, Delta Five Pro Daniel Defense in a twenty six inch uh, barrel six five Creedmoor. It hit where I aimed it. That's that's what I can ask for. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one thing that and we'll talk about we all had similar on our rifles and what we did differently, right? The one thing we all had is after our twenties, right? Because we love them, obviously. Another thing too, you see on the bottom of this is Arca rails. We all ran Arca rails. Uh, talk to us a little about what's the, what are the benefits of Arca rails, Josh. Uh, it, it increases your speed and your ability to mount your rifle to the tripod. So uh, better than pick rail to tripod. Uh, that allows you to slide back and forth, get into an awkward position if you need to. Uh, rapid configuration system. So. It's pretty much the standard these days on every rifle. Six o'clock is Arca. Yeah, and that, another thing too, I like really like the Arca that and Lee and I shot this last year together. We saw that with, as teammates, you can just switch real quick, just yep, switch yep, your yep. plates and go from rifle to binos really quickly. It was nice. Uh, another really important thing we talk about a lot, you know, outside of rifles, is bags. You know, last year, Lee, you ran a bigger bag. This year, you chose to run a, a smaller. Uh, what? What? How did that work out for you? Uh, well, I mean, last year I think we we, we all overpacked. What bag did you run last year? Uh, well, last year I think I ran my Everly as well. Uh, mm-hmm. I ran an Everly stock, uh, low drag two. Um, you know, it's it's a good kind of like a day pack. Uh, it's a little much for what we did yeah. uh, for what we did at Safari because I think we were preparing for multiple scenarios that we didn't know if we would encounter or not. And uh, this time, because we knew exactly you know how the competition ran, uh, I carried a, uh, also an Everly, but I carried the Mini Me. Uh, took the uh, the bladder out of it, yeah, and basically shoved it full of mags and flipped on some bags on the outside. And you're uh, on different chest rig this year too, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, last year uh, we we kind of just made do with yep. uh, bino chest rigs that we had, uh, but this year we went with something a little more purpose built. Uh, and by purpose built, I went to Amazon and bought a nice chest rig. I mean, it wasn't anything name brand or anything like that, uh, but uh, it housed my binos, housed my wind meter. Uh, housed uh, two mags that we had clipped onto it, pen and obviously scorecard stuff like that, and it was basically my my, my Mary Poppins pouch. I yeah. get anything I need out of it quick. So, what uh, what bag and chest rig did you run? I ran an old tactical tailor, like lunch bag. It's okay. Tiny. Um, and then the new recon chest rig from Everly Stock. Did you like that? We... It was good. Yeah. Everything I needed and pretty lightweight, efficient. Everything was good about it. And it's expandable, so if I need to put mag pouches or anything else on there, yeah, I can I can run it for other things. 
What bag? Uh, you ran the voodoo bag, mm -hmm. and then uh, the, was your the, Haley, the Haley Strategic, uh, uh, the large one, how it's called, uh, chest rig, which I ran last year it's at Teach Bar. It worked well. And then I ran uh, my Vertex bag, just regular, the regular backpack, which really you don't need a lot for this bag as far as the pack, and you were right about mm -hmm. that. And then my uh, the Victos, the new Victos chest rig, which was great. I wish I had a little bit of room for the binos, but we'll work on that next year, but it worked out really well. Um, and another thing, you know, that's really important when it comes to the gear on this is your tripod, right? We can't say enough. We, and you guys have run countless tripods, but this two vets tripod performs flawless. How did the uh, the recon V two work out for you? Yeah, so I, I lucked out. Dan over there at, at two vets was was nice though early on. Uh, I think we saw it when it was a prototype stage yep. at a match, and uh, uh, he basically said, "Hey, man, yeah, uh, this is the recon V two. It allows it." It's that the V1 basically closes up around a dish bowl, so mm -hmm. it, it, it still has opening at the bottom, and it, it has its advantages and disadvantages, advantage being stability, disadvantage being it's a dish bowl, you get less articulation. Um, I run an Anvil 30 uh, ball head, uh, the Arca Anvil 30 from Really Right Stuff, and running that Recon V2, it's light, it's fast, plus the Anvil 30, that Anvil 30 weighs like half the yeah. original ball head I had on there. Mm -hmm. um, that tripod's really fast, quarter turn legs to extend them. Um, and that tripod's taller than I am, which is a big deal because I'm, I'm six foot three. Well, and also taller than you, but also can get really short, right? Yeah. That's, that's the thing we talk. So this is the Q, uh, QD, right? QDT. QDT. Yeah. So the QDT, and Jason and I ran this one. I freaking love this thing. It's mm -hmm. great. But it would have been nice a few times, but then we talked about you extend the legs. So this thing did everything we needed to do. Um, mm -hmm. I can't, but. And yeah. the, the ball head was. Freaking great, you know? Stability wise, I mean, like we, we've shot both tripods. The QDT is nice because it's got such a wide stance. Yep. But as you, you're aware, in Safari, there's certain areas where if you widen your stance, you're basically off the cliff mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. from the shooting position. Yeah. So the, the shorter, smaller tripod, in my opinion, is probably uh, gives you a little bit more options. Yeah, absolutely. Did you, is it your first competition shoot off the QDT? This one? Yeah, y'all shot, shot for a while now, haven't you? We used it at uh, the Barris, okay. Barris Team Challenge as well. Yeah. Uh, this, was, this was your first time to shoot off tripods in a competition, right? It was. How, how did you feel about it? I liked it. I liked it. Um, it's a bit of a game changer. It is. You know, without the tripod, there were targets out there I would not I, have yeah, been able to absolutely. And here's the thing, the crazy thing, I actually shot better off the tripod this week weekend than I did shooting prone in some situations. Hmm. And, and that, that's funny you mentioned that because he always yells at me for shooting on the tripod. So absent the rainy day on the third day, which was absolutely we'll talk about that later. Yeah, it's, yeah. But uh, I put, I pretty much went prone when I could, and uh, it was it was it was definitely more stable. Like yeah. uh, I mean, obviously when you have three points of contact, you're sitting there, you're bisting your gun and everything like that. You're going to be more 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 stable for your shots. And then running six five Creedmoor was also a, a play into that because you're yeah. before I ran five five six and. I mean, I could sit there and do whatever I want with that gun and it didn't move. And then the 6.5 Creedmoor, I had to fight recoil a little bit more. Yep. So getting into a prone, prone position was a little bit more uh, of a, a better option overall. Yeah. So. Um, and we'll talk about, about the difference between large frame and small frame gas guns. We'll talk about the mats in the next videos. But we'll, we'll, you know, and So another thing on gear too that we've learned a lot about, and I want to talk about modifications too. We'll talk about, that's the last thing we'll talk about is modifications, but uh, is bags, right? There, the amount of different types of bags you can have in uh, in precision shooting is crazy. I mean, there's You're thousands talking, of options. Talking rear bags or backpacks? Rear, yeah, exactly. Bags, yeah. bags, bags. Right. So yeah. you, you can have you have your pillow bag, which Jason used for the first time. The lifesaver, which I used last year for the first time at Team Safari and Lee's last year. I was like, dude, this is a, it's a literally it's not the game changer because there's another bag called the game changer. Yeah. But that having bags in order to shoot from bags. How many bags did, did you carry personally on you? Well, um, in our team dynamic, he's he's the one that's willing to ruck more. I'm I'm always the one that's just gonna. Z chuck Mule. It. Yeah, he, he's we he's, had four total though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we kept uh, we both had our rear bags because we that's something I think that's more catered to how the shooter wants to run. I run a mini tack pad from We Bad. Uh, I think he's running a tack pad from We Bad, mm -hmm. and then uh, I carried a pump pillow from We Bad as well. The is that the other one? one? The red, what's the red one? The, the red one is the Bison Tactical makes the other. Yeah. And that one is more of a PRS kind of bag. I don't recommend carrying it long distances, but 
for this particular match, the way it was set up, and we knew what the distances hey, were. Dude, I guarantee you everybody wanted that for uh, for stage one of the West Coast. Everybody wanted that utter bag for the stage mm -hmm. one of the, of the West Course. There, there were definitely, I, I would count probably four stages overall where that bag was yeah. pretty crucial yeah. in making the to, to making a good stable shooting position. Unless you chose to try to finagle and mess yeah. with the tripod, then at uh, that point in time, you kill time. time. Yeah. But yeah, so, uh, you know, Jason and I had two, we call them cab socks, the ones you made out of your old britches. He likes to run those, we call them cab socks. Okay, creepy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, the big pillow from Wee Bad, which I don't know what that was called. And then uh, I have my Accuracy First rear bag, and you had that one from Armageddon Gear, the uh, the one that go, both go QD, which it's nice to have when you're kind of missed, reaching around to be able to reach that bag and just kind of sit it there. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a nice have. Uh, you know, that you're just kind of now starting to shoot off the bag, so. Mm -hmm. Love uh, it. Yeah, I can't. He like, like, Brandon, I need the pillow. Throw it up there and he just lay on it and just ding, 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 impact, impact. I was like, all right. Thanks, Jay. So nice. No pressure. It's pretty much all we brought. It is. You get a tripod, a rear bag, some snacks the, and some the, water. The guns and the ammo. We, we didn't even bring snacks and water. I brought some tuna. <laughs> never ate it. I don't know if that's a good anymore. That's yeah, I would not eat tuna. So, the one thing we talked about is, is modifications. Every, that's one thing I, I actually enjoy the most is buying stuff from like Home Depot, like the, this little tan thing you see up here. That's actually a uh, uh, anti skid pad or something for furniture that uh, Cav bought and we used for, uh, which match was that? The G Watt? No, that was uh, Real World. It almost makes it comfortable. And in the back, you know, just paracord. What kind of modifications like that? Like not stuff you buy, not 419, not brakes, but stuff you go buy at uh, you know Home Depot that you can take to tell. Oh, people. I can tell you. Data cards. Data cards. Dude, the right in the, the rain, rain data cards were freaking perfect. We need to talk. The right in the rain data cards. The right in the rain gear. How how everybody else's pat. Everything else was washing uh -huh. off, and I looked down, and mine was still crystal yep. clear. That was awesome on sun Saturday, sun, yeah. Sunday. We'll talk about that too. We, we ran that. I run some off-brandy um, uh, armband yeah. for, the, for mine. I just fold the fold the third of the card underneath and cram it into the armband. But I used one originally that I bought from Walmart that looks like one of those old. Uh, if you ever played peewee football, yep. the, the quarterback armbands. It's just the sweat ones. Yeah, there. and then, or you can use the phone holders. But that one, the problem with those is that's made out of neoprene. So when you use it. And you sweat yep. like it just all of the stuff blurs in it, and so the right and the rain cards are really nice for that. Yep. And then, but when I swatched the smaller armband, it was a little easier, a little less cumbersome to use. But yeah, you can use anything that works. I think Josh, you use our Armageddon gear one. I got the Armageddon gear, but Maybe. that's that's not modified. Well, I guess it is. I have tape over yeah, you the can use uh, frog tape. Frog tape over the placards. So if I need to erase, yep. peel that layer of tape off, and I'm good to go. What um, uh, what else do you use cards for? Let's call them uh, home modifications. Do any of your setups? That's these days they make something for just about yeah. everything on the gun. Um, data cards. I mean, putting putting tape on your buttstock and writing stuff yeah. down. I mean, they make something for that now. So um, we both also mark our rings with uh, yeah, I paint marker my stuff. Yeah, yeah, just just in case you, you, if something starts slipping or whatever, it's pretty easy to diagnose your gun. If, if if something's weird or if you lose some torque on something like that, you you find out everything's all wonky. Also, we shoot the sniper matches from time to time, so yeah. they tell you to remove your stuff uh, off off the ball, off the gun, yeah. off the off your rings or whatever. So that type of stuff just allows you to go right back to where you were. Yeah, I mean that's kind of you know it, anything you think of Jay that you brought that rain gear. We need to emergency rain, rain gear always. You should keep that in there. Just, alpaca socks. Alpaca, you're you're welcome for that. They make a difference, but uh, oh yeah. I got something. Shout out to uh, Colin. Oh, Fehu uh, Outdoors. Yeah, Colin Fawson. Uh, he he runs Fehu Outdoors, and yeah, uh, he got you set up with the tripod chaps. Oh, and dude, the I got tripod everything sling. you can imagine. Oh, that's another thing too. So he had the the clear, mm -hmm. uh, clear the clear uh, the Velcro pack. Yeah, you put that on there. It had both of our data cards and the time in there. That was fantastic to have. All and I, I want the uh, the the uh, called it the uh, the sack. For PG terms, we call it the, the, the tripod sack. And like, the, you know, you know, it's funny. Even when you get to the tripod, all the things you can do to your tripod, it's like, oh, now I need to change this yeah. out and this out. So, I, I, I like to keep the tripod because tripod is one of those things. It's like probably the second heaviest solid piece of gear you keep on you other than your rifle and your ammo. Yeah, after hucking that, I don't care. About yeah. Anything. Well, so <laughs> the thing with the tripod is, is I don't like to add too much to it. But the tripod sling, I think you and I are both running it. It's easy, it's nice. Uh, you can fasten all three legs together and you can yeah. carry it stage to stage. It's, it's, it's really good. 
for that. Um, we, we didn't use the chaps or anything like that, but Josh and I pretty much just kept our own data cards. Yeah. So, yeah. Not much of an issue there. But yeah, so that's the long short of the gear we use for the, you know, the uh, AccuFire 20, the Team Safari, Compass Dynamics, once again, thank you. Thank you, Jimmy and Zach. And thank you, Clay and Tyson, for sending us an email all those you know, two yeah. years ago to come bring yeah. us to five states, the five state game war convention, and lead us out of this addiction. Uh, but, but any questions you have, please come follow us, AccuFireTech, and all the socials. Thank you, guys.